I wrote a book called Too Big to Jail, How Prosecutors Compromise with Corporations. And the book is about what happens when companies commit crimes. Companies literally can't be put into jail. I'm looking at some of the largest companies in the world, big pharma companies, General Motors, Toyota, Google, BP, Halliburton. And in my book, I describe how even in the cases of the largest the public companies, prosecutors have had to compromise because of the pressure they face to solve these cases, but the enormous resources that these companies have to defend themselves. The largest companies, the public companies, get deals where they avoid a conviction entirely. These are called deferred prosecution agreements or non-prosecution agreements. Only about a quarter of their time are there corporate monitors that are independently supervising compliance. I describe in the book how two-thirds of the time employees are not prosecuted when companies enter these non-prosecution deals. But now that I'm looking more carefully at what happens when the employees are prosecuted, even when they are prosecuted, many of those cases are dropped. The vast majority get no jail time at all. They pay a small fine or uh, receive some probation. Early on in my teaching career here at the University of Virginia, I noticed these agreements. They seemed to be a new phenomena. There had only been a couple dozen of them at the time. I started to collect them. And I wrote an article about them in 2009. They became the subject of congressional hearings, and so I testified a couple of times to describe what was happening in these cases. Perhaps unsurprisingly, you see some of the same companies, including large public companies, including banks, get prosecuted time and time again. Maybe different units, maybe different crimes. But we have large numbers of recidivist corporations, and so something isn't really working.